You ever wondered what it would be like if you entered your favourite book and had all the characters come to life as real sentient beings that you could have fun with? Well, we're sure you have. After all, what's the fun in reading books without a bit of imagination? Labyrinth is similar as a musical fantasy film directed by Jim Henson and starring a young Jennifer Connelly and the rock star David Bowie in the leading roles. The story was written by Terry Jones of Monty Python fame. Labyrinth follows a 16-year-old Sarah Williams as she journeys into the world of the book she's obsessed with only for it all to go terribly wrong. Now, just before we go into our video, we have a small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to the channel. It's a small click for you, but for us, it means an awful lot. Thank you, now let's begin. Labyrinth, where Sarah's story first begins. The movie begins with a young Sarah Williams reciting lines from a book titled The Labyrinth. Give me the child, she starts, and ominous lines they are too. Stick around, you'll understand why. Sarah, a teenager with a flair for imagination and theatrics, is introduced, reciting lines from the book with aplomb. However, her recitation soon comes to an end as she forgets the last line. A timely interruption, maybe, as she remembers she has to be at home to babysit her brother, or her half-brother, Toby, while her father and stepmother head out. Back home, she becomes frustrated with Toby because his constant crying interrupts her recitation and because he is given her favourite toy, a teddy bear named Lancelot. At her wit's end, she wishes that Toby was taken away by the Goblin King from her beloved loved book, you guessed it, the very same labyrinth. What happens next? Lo and behold, Toby goes missing and Sarah is attacked by a barn owl. Actually wait, the owl turns into David Bowie, or we mean Jareth, the Goblin King from the labyrinth. Flamboyant as he is charming, Jareth tells her her wish has been granted and that Toby has been taken away. So all must supposedly be well, right? Not really, as Sarah instantly regrets her wish. Nobody wants their little sibling to be taken away by a Goblin King, no matter how annoying they are, do they? Sarah refuses to let Toby disappear forever and begs Jareth to return her brother. Jareth, selective as he is in granting wishes, instead juggles a crystal ball in front of her, challenging her to look into the future. Sarah doesn't do it, and Jareth dismisses her as not a match for he. He tells her to forget the boy. But while Sarah may not be a real match for Jareth, her determination to get her little brother back surpasses anything that the Goblin King can throw at her, and he literally throws a snake at her. Hesitantly, he tells her that Toby is in his castle, which doesn't really look that far away from Sarah's window. To get to his castle, he tells her that she has to solve a labyrinth in 13 hours, otherwise her brother will be turned into a goblin for eternity. And we know he means business because his clock has 13 marked on it instead of 12. Sarah enters the labyrinth with a little help from a dwarf named Hoggle. Struggling to find her way at first, she has her Alice from Alice in Wonderland moment when she hears a worm talking to her. Icky as it sounds, worms are actually quite nice in the labyrinth, as this particular worm helps Sarah find her footing in the labyrinth but inadvertently sends her off in the wrong direction because nobody in their right mind would want to go towards Jared's castle, right? Sarah, definitely in as right a mind as one expects to be if they were on a quest to save their brother from a goblin king, well she ends up in a dungeon after she's dropped there by literal helping hands. But not all is yet lost as she reunites with Hoggle. The two encounter a beast called Ludo whom Sarah befriends while Hoggle flees. Hoggle goes back to Jared who quests questions his loyalty to him, the Goblin King, as he was supposed to deceive Sarah and not help her. Now this is where Jarrett's real ruthlessness comes to light, when he humiliates Hoggle and promises to turn him into the Prince of Stench if Sarah kisses him. Jarrett gives him an enchanted peach and orders him to feed that peach to Sarah. Meanwhile, Sarah is being tortured by a few creatures called the Fire Gang. Hoggle comes to her aid and she kisses Hoggle. Is Hoggle going to turn into a prince? Well, maybe later, but for now he and Sarah fall through a trap door into a swamp called the Bog of Eternal Stench. But not all is as bad as it seems as they unite with the dear monster Ludo once again. Together the three encounter Sir Didymus, an anthropomorphic fox who allows them to cross the swamp when they ask him nicely for his permission. He joins them as well on his steed, a cute little bearded collie. When the group feels hungry, Hoggle gives Sarah the peach given to him by Jareth and she falls into a trance where Jareth, actually David Bowie, sings to her. Now, who wouldn't want to fall into that trance? Except this trance makes Sarah forget her quest altogether and dance with Jareth who proclaims his love for her. At this point, you start to question whether this movie is really meant for children, and I know I did. Anyway, Sarah rebuffs him only to fall into the junkyard where an 
old junk lady tries to brainwash her with toys, including her bear Lancelot. The brainwashing actually comes across as guilt tripping and maybe even works as one. Recall the beginning of the movie where Sarah is frustrated by her beloved Lancelot being given away to Toby, but now for Toby's sake she's ready to leave all her toys, including Lancelot, behind. Now how's that for character growth? With old junk lady's attempt at brainwashing having had the opposite effect then intended, Ludo and Sir Didymus are able to restore Sarah's memory, only for them to be attacked by a robotic guard at the city gate. Hoggle comes to their aid, and despite feeling unworthy of Sarah's forgiveness, Sarah still forgives him. Their reunion is quite poignant, and the gang who we're all rooting for ride into the city together. Jareth attacks them with his goblin army, but fails as Ludo summons literal rocks to fight for him because rocks are friends. At this point, Sarah leaves her friends behind, for the time has come for her to face Jareth on her own. She insists upon a one-to-one -one meeting and confronts him in a topsy-turvy room where she tries to retrieve her brother and fails. Jareth offers her one last chance to fulfil her dreams. Sarah rebuffs him once again and begins to recite those ominous lines, give me the child one last time. Yet again she forgets the last line. Jareth tempts her back even more, offering to be her slave, now having become obsessed with her. Yeah, we know that's kind of weird when you think about it. But just like that, she remembers the last line, you have no power over me. Straightforward and strong, it does the trick. Jareth accepts his defeat and returns Sarah and Toby home. Safely back home, Sarah gives Toby Lancelot for his keeping and goes back to her room. Having learned a great deal from her adventure, she begins to miss the friends she made back in the labyrinth. Are they gone forever? Well, if this movie taught us anything, it's to say out loud when we need something. As Sarah notices her friends in the mirror, she tells them she'll always need them and they all reunite in Sarah's room. Even Jareth, in his owl form, notices the reunion from the window and flies away. And so there we have it. Sarah and her friends happily lived ever after. Or so you wish. There's a sequel where we learn what happens to Sarah after the labyrinth and it's really not that nice. What happens to Sarah after the movie? Jim Henson decided to publish a sequel to The Labyrinth titled Return to Labyrinth in the form of a manga. With Jake Forbes serving as the creator and Chris Lai serving as the illustrator, Return to Labyrinth literally takes you back to The Labyrinth. It follows some of the original characters, introducing many new ones too. In this manga, we learn about what happens to our dear protagonist, Sarah, after the original movie. In Return to Labyrinth, Sarah is amongst the side characters and still has a major role to play. She's now all grown up, working as an English teacher at a nearby school. What's more, she has also forgotten the labyrinth as well as her friends and adventures. Things were not always like that though, as she kept in touch with them and often found solace in fantasy as well as her friends after being returned from the labyrinth the first time round. At the same time, she also worked hard to fulfil her dreams of becoming an actress, only for her applications to be rejected by the performing arts colleges of her choice, namely Juilliard School. It is this rejection that made her fall into despair and leave her dreams behind. But back in the labyrinth, our suave antagonist, Jareth, wasn't able to forget her. Far from it, the girl he had once dismissed as not being any match for him had become an object of his obsession. You see, after having lost to Sarah a decade ago, he started losing his powers and believed that only Sarah had the ability to restore them. So he asked a sorceress and also an old flame of his, Mizumi, Queen of Moraine, to create an ablation out of Sarah. Now, an ablation is a sentient being developed from the original source, in this case Sarah herself. The ablation, strange that may seem, was created with Sarah's implicit consent. Going back a bit, after her application was rejected by Juilliard, Sarah spiralled into despair and wanted her dreams to be taken away from her. Her. The ablation allowed for this to happen and so Sarah became more realistic and practical and began to focus on her career as a teacher. The ablation also wiped out her memories of the labyrinth along with her dreams. It's sad, but to be objective, it did serve a purpose. So after Queen Mizumi had created an ablation for Jareth called Moppet on certain conditions, Jareth travels to Queen Mizumi's kingdom to get her. While there, he finds that Moppet is indifferent to him. Still, he takes her back to his city and keeps her imprisoned in a tower. He slowly realises that he will not be able to make Moppet love him so he has to abandon her at a place called the Junk City. Moppet, having no memories of what happened to her, lives in the Junk City until she's found by the city's people and is given to the Goblin City's mayor, Mayor Spittledrum, as a slave because of unpaid taxes. After becoming his slave, she only once comes across as after becoming his slave, she only once comes across Jareth when she stumbles upon a meeting between him and Mayor Spittledrum. Taken aback by her appearance, Jareth asks whether she remembers him and she doesn't. Moppet also has an important role to play in return 
into Labyrinth as she becomes close to Sarah's half-brother, Toby. Yes, Toby has now entered the Labyrinth after having been lured there by Jareth. He befriends many creatures and has adventures all of his own, but is then captured and sentenced to execution by Mayor Spittledrum. However, Jareth rescues him and invites him to a ball the very same evening. The ball has many attendees from the Labyrinth and other kingdoms, including Queen Mizumi. At the end of the ball, Jareth abdicates the throne, proclaims Toby as his heir and promptly vanishes. He then travels to the real world, where he meets Sarah, who doesn't recognise him. He tells her that they know each other from the theatre and informs her that he is producing a play of his own, requesting her to attend it. After that, he repeatedly stalks her and becomes very jealous whenever she's with any other man. With his magic now restored, he creates a theatre and invites Sarah as a guest. Sarah accepts the invitation and attends a puppet show showcasing her labyrinth adventures. The show jogs her memory and everything she experienced when she was in the labyrinth and it all comes back to her. So when Jareth requests her to return with him to the labyrinth to live in their own world together, she happily accepts. However, he instead takes her to a world where everything is blank, with neither detail nor definition. This hugely disappoints Sarah, but Jareth promises her that this is the perfect place to build their own new world. He then leans in for a kiss, but is interrupted by Moppet. Moppet, being an ablation created out of Sarah's dreams, dreams about what is going on with Sarah. Realising that she'll not be able to resist Jareth and his powers, Moppet decides to save her. Moppet, by the way, also has other reasons to reach Jareth and Sarah, as the labyrinth is being destroyed by Queen Mizumi's forces with the goblins resisting her. Given her bond to Sarah, she enters her and Jareth's world and begs them to save the labyrinth. Jareth agrees to save the labyrinth on one condition, with just one kiss from Sarah. Jareth manages to save the labyrinth with ease and becomes its king once again. And where does that exactly leave Sarah? So when Sarah came face to face with Moppet in the new world she and Jareth were creating, she linked hands with Moppet and became whole once again. Her dreams are restored and she's back to being in touch with her dreams and her fantasies. She and Toby return after Toby manages to persuade Jareth to send both of them home where they belong. There she plans to create her own path, her own destiny, and we hope this time round it's a fantastical one. Marvellous verdict. Well, well, well. It's been quite a there and back again journey for Sarah Williams. Do you know what C.S. Lewis wrote to his goddaughter in a dedication at the beginning of the Chronicles of Narnia? He said he hoped she would be old enough to start reading fairy tales again one day. This about sums up Sarah's journey into the labyrinth. She believed in fantasy as a young girl, then she grew up to become old enough to believe in it again. And there we have it. Having thoroughly enjoyed this to and fro within the labyrinth, not for nothing has the original movie been deemed one of the greatest fantasy movies of all time, and the sequel also has received highly positive reviews. And if you liked our content, of course, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't done so already. Otherwise, have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.